back with another video on Future Warfare. Welcome back all you beautiful people to my devlog on Future Warfare. I was very surprised after editing that this video is actually coming out to be about 30 minutes. It was not my intention, but everything in this video I felt like had to be tied together. So first we're going to be updating the health bars by displaying the amount of health each unit has over it. And then we're going to go back into the upgrade shop and do some improvements and bug fixes. And then lastly, we're going to go over the past upgrades I've added, as well as new upgrades I've added just now. I also implemented code for each of the upgrades, so we'll be going over that too. So yeah, let's get started. Alright, let's get started by adding that health bar text. So we're going to go into the minor prefab and select the health bar attached to it. This will be what we're going to be adding the game ob empty game object to. And once we get that game object added, we're going to add a text mesh component to it, which is what we're going to be accessing through our health bar text script. Now we're going to need a reference to the miner's hitbox game object. So I'm going to create a variable for that. And we also need to access the hitbox script, which contains the health bar variable that we're going to use for the health bar's text. So within fixed update, we're going to be accessing text mesh text, and we're going to be putting in the miner's hitbox health variable, and we're going to be converting that integer variable into a string. So that's why we're using dot two string at the end there. So basically, fixed update is called fifty times per second. So this will be constantly updating the miner's health variable onto the health bar. All right, let's see how it looks in game. As you can see, we now have the health being displayed for the miner. And we can see that the miner has 60 health. All right, let's revisit the health bar text script. And as you can see, I added a ton of variables. And this this is basically just all the variables I've added for each of the units in the game, and including the bases. So I just added a bunch of if statements as well, so that we can distinguish between the different hit boxes that we have referenced. So I'm just matching up all the names and getting the correct script components that matches the set head box. I also included the Galaxians as well. I just thought I might as well link it all up. And I did the same thing within the fixed update in updating the health bars to the string. Now we have all the units with working health bars. And if you look to the top left and right, the base health bars display their health as well. And don't worry about the <laughs> very large decimal number. I plan on fixing that down the road. Let's move onwards onto updating the upgrade shop. Let's go into the upgrade shop script. And so what I have so far is a list of common upgrade objects. And we're just gonna fill that list with all of the common upgrades. 
we are not only going to have common upgrades in the game, we're also going to have uncommon upgrades, rare upgrades, epic upgrades, and so on. So we're going to create separate lists for each of those items because they're going to have different chances of dropping. So common upgrades are going to be the most common, uncommon are going to be a little bit harder to get, and then rare is going to be, well, more rare. So for each of those lists that we just created, we're going to be loading directly from these folders contained within resources. So we have a folder for each of the rarities. So we have the common upgrades folder, the epic upgrades, rare upgrades, and uncommon upgrades. And we have all of the prefabs for the upgrades that we need to load in in each of these folders. So we're going to have a randomly generated number to determine the rarity of the upgrade for a specific slot in the upgrade shop. So if the random number between 1 and 1000 lands below 700, then we're going to get ourselves a common upgrade. So I'm just going back into some old code here and changing the old list which contains all the upgrades to the common upgrades list and we're gonna have an if statement that's gonna have another randomly generated number that will determine out of all of the common upgrades which one is going to be selected for the upgrade slot now we're going to do the same thing for the uncommon upgrades so if the randomly generated number for the rarity is between 700 and 920 it will be a uncommon upgrade and of course lastly we have the rare upgrades so if the randomly generated number is above 920 then it will be selected as a rare upgrade so with the current code that we have we have a bug where some of the shop slots are vacant and it definitely has something to do with the list. So what I was trying to do was add a list to a list, which I, I don't know if that's like bad programming practice or what, but it wasn't working in this case. So I created a selected upgrade variable and we're going to use that and set that equal to whatever upgrade that is selected. It's a lot simpler and it works. Here we have the upgrade shop in working order. I did it 20 times just to be sure uh, we didn't get the same bug. And it seems like it has been resolved. You may have noticed we have duplicates of certain upgrades when running through the upgrade shop. So I wanna I wanna combat this and we're going to create a for each loop within the upgrade shop script. And we're going to store each of the upgrades into strings. So for each upgrade that's added to the upgrade shop, we're going to be storing the name of that upgrade. And we're going to be comparing it to the currently selected upgrade that will be added to the next slot in the shop so that if the name matches or sorry if the name of one of the upgrades matches one of the past upgrades then we're going to set is duplicate to true before we add an upgrade to the shop we want to make sure it is not a duplicate so we're just going to add this if statement here and we're going to come down to the bottom once everything is run through and reset 
is duplicate to false. And we're also going to clear the names list. Awesome. We can see now that there's no more duplicates. And yeah, the upper shop's really starting to come together. Now let's actually move on to adding some code to these upgrades. Since currently they are just lifeless buttons. So I went ahead and moved all the current upgrade code that I had all into one script. So I'm putting it under the credit script. I'm also going to be moving over the health and damage variables for each of the units so that it's all within one script. So I ran into an issue with the credits. When playing the game and purchasing a unit, it would subtract from the total credits. However, once I opened the upgrade shop and purchased an upgrade, it was not subtracting from the same credits variable. So this leads me to believe that there's multiple instances of the same variable. So to fix that, I just simply changed this variable to a static variable, which I just learned means it just makes this variable have only one instance of it. So that seemed to do the trick. We want to do the exact same thing to all the variables in the credit script. So, for all the damage and the health stats for each of the units. This is because this is going to be applied to all of the units. They all should have the same max health. They should all have, do the same damage. And also, when we apply an upgrade, we want that upgrade to apply to every unit of that type. So let's say we upgrade the miner's max HP from 60 to 80. We want every single minor unit that we purchase after getting the upgrade to have the updated 80 HP. I went ahead and made another script to contain the Galaxian stat variables. And for these, I also made them static as well. Now let's transition over to looking at each of the upgrades that I have in the game so far. First we have the minor damage 1 upgrade. And so the base damage for the miner is going to be 0 0.35 and purchasing this upgrade is going to increase their damage to 0 0.45. This damage is applied in fixed updates so it's basically applied 50 times in a second. And that's going to give us the DPS, which stands for damage per second. And that's going to be 17.5, increased to 22.5 DPS. Here's the method we have for the minor damage upgrade 1. So when the button is clicked, this method will be run. And we'll have the upgrade price currently be 1,250. And we're going to check and see if we have enough credits to purchase this. And if so, we're going to adjust the miner's damage. And it seems like I forgot to update the miner damage. Um, instead of 0 0.4, it should be 0 0.45. And then after that, we're going to apply the upgrade price by subtracting that from the credits. Here we have the minor damage upgrade 2 and it's pretty much the same as the last one. Um, increasing the damage from 0 0.45 from minor damage upgrade 1 to the new 0 0.6 damage which is equal to 30 DPS. Now we're gonna move over to minor health upgrade 1 and this is going to increase the base health of 60 for all the miners to 80. With minor health upgrade 2, it's going to go from 
a max HP of 80 to 120. Here we have our first unique upgrade. This one's going to be for the miner unit, which is called the miner salvage converter. So with this upgrade, any miner unit is able to salvage 500 credits by destroying a Galaxian unit. And this would be a pretty good upgrade to have early on in the game to rack up some extra credits. So the main method is pretty much the same as the previous upgrades we just went over. The only difference is we're going to be using a bull variable instead of setting an integer variable like the others. So we're going to set minor salvage upgrade active equal to true. And within the hitbox scripts for the Galassian units, we're going to check if the salvage upgrade is true and once their health is equal to zero, so when the unit is destroyed and the salvage upgrade is active, we're going to call the method unit salvaged. And within unit salvaged, we're just going to simply add 500 credits to the total amount of credits the player has. Alright, let's see it in action. So we're going to start off by buying a Dreadnought Miner unit for 750 credits. He'll just make his way over to destroy one of the vanguards. And once he does, if you look at the top, we'll see that we got 500 credits right back. Next up is the upgrades for the blaster unit. I won't be explaining these upgrades because they're pretty much the same. Increasing the damage and the health for the blaster units. For the blaster units, Unique upgrade, we have Blaster Improved Cooling. So this is going to affect the attack rate of the Blaster units. And it's going to be decreasing the attack rate of 1.3 to 0 0.8. So 0 0.8 is equivalent to 8 tenth of a second. So it's going to increase the fire rate by a pretty good amount. For the blaster unit and this can mu really multiply their damage if you pair it up with the damage upgrades i showed earlier cool let's see a comparison of a blaster unit without the cooling upgrade and with the cooling upgrade so here we have a blaster unit without the upgrade Here we have the blast unit with the upgrade, and we can see that he does a lot more damage now. Let's go over the sharpshooter upgrades. The high tech scope is going to be the unique upgrade for the Dreadnought Sharpshooters. This upgrade increases the range from 13 to 17. Okay, here's the method for the high tech sniper scope. It's just going to do two things. We're going to deactivate the range game object attached to the Sharpshooter. And in place of that, we're going to activate the upgraded range game object attached to the sharpshooter. And if I go over to the prefab here, we can see a giant green rectangle coming out, which is the range. 
So, if a Galaxian walks within this rectangle, the Sharpshooter will begin attacking. And the tiles that you can see in the backgrounds is what I'm using as a measurement for the range. So, the range game object comes out to about 13 of those tiles. And the rectangle that goes further out is the upgraded range game object. So that's coming out to 17 tiles. Once the high tech sniper scope is activated, we will deactivate the range game object and activate the upgraded range game object like so. Let's compare the sharpshooter's base range to the high tech sniper scope's upgraded range. With the sharpshooter's base range, the sharpshooter won't be able to attack with three units in front. However, once the high tech sniper scope is purchased, the sharpshooters are now able to attack with three units in front because the Galaxians fall within the range. Which, as you can see in this case, turned the battle in the favor of the Dreadnoughts. Up next, let's go through the Assault Troopers upgrades. All right, here we have our next unique upgrade. This one being the Assault Trooper Overdrive. So the Assault Trooper attacks in a burst fire. So each time the Assault Trooper attacks, they will shoot three lasers within the burst. So with this upgrade, the first laser is gonna still do the same amount of damage. However, the second laser will do 1.5 times the Assault Trooper's base damage. And with that, the third laser will do double the Assault Trooper's base damage. So for this upgrade, we're going to be using a bool variable to see if the Assault Trooper overcharge is active. And if it isn't active, then we're just going to do the regular burst fire by spawning in only bullet one for all three lasers. If the upgrade is active, we will spawn in bullet one for the first shot. And the second shot will spawn in bullet two. And finally, we're going to spawn in bullet three to complete the burst. The reason I'm spawning in three different bullets is because each one has a different set damage. So if we go over to the script attached to those bullets, I'm going to look for the name of the game object attached to this script. And we're going to match them up. So if this game object attached to this script is Dreadnought Assault Trooper Laser 1, then we're going to just set the damage to the Assault Trooper's base damage. And if it's Dreadnought Assault Trooper Laser 2, then we're going to multiply the base damage by 1.5 and do the same to the, Dre the Dreadnought Assault Trooper Laser 3, but multiply the base by 2. So here's the prefabs for the three lasers we're going to be spawning in when the overdrive upgrade is active. You may have noticed uh, laser two is a bit brighter and laser three is even brighter still. Later on, I do plan on making different sprites for each of the lasers. 
cool. Let's do a comparison of before and after the overdrive is activated. We can see that the Assault Trooper now just melts straight through the vanguards with no problem. For our final unit that we're going to cover, we have the Antimatter Grenadier. If you watched some of my previous videos, you may have noticed that I changed the name of the Grenadier. It used to be the Grav Grenadier, but Changed it to antimatter because it just makes a lot more sense to me and it's a lot more fitting. Molecular Decay will be the unique upgrade for antimatter grenadier. And this is going to be the only epic upgrade I have in the game so far. So it's going to be a very strong upgrade. This upgrade will deal damage over time to whichever unit is hit by one of their grenades. So this upgrade will do 1 damage every half a second, or 2 damage per second. So this is going to be inside each of the Galaxian's hitboxes. I added in an if statement inside the fixed update. If decay is equal to true, then we're going to run the method take decay damage. This method will simply apply one damage every half a second until this unit is destroyed. Okay, cool. Let's check out the upgrade in-game. We can see that once the Galaxian Scouts are hit by the antimatter grenades, they start taking decay damage. I think that this upgrade will be very strong for attacking enemy backlines since those units will keep taking decay damage until they're destroyed. I made some changes to the pricing of the Dreadnought units. I increased the price of the Assault Trooper by 500. Previously the Sharpshooter and the Assault Trooper were both 1500 but I didn't really like that they're the same price. I thought it would be better to have each unit increase in price. I also increased the price of the Antimatter Grenadier by a lot. It used to be 2000 and now the Grenadier is 3500 My decision for this was because that unit is actually pretty, pretty damn strong. So I just wanted a price to match that. And as you can see, I have a new unit added to the purchasing buttons. We have the Plasma Conductor. That's going to be the next unit I add into the game. And that will also be my next video that I cover. Thank you so much for watching my devlog. I'd really appreciate it if you give this video a like. Or subscribe if you want to see some more videos in the future. That's going to be it guys. Have a great rest of your day or night.